Is this working? I'm gonna set my border right about there. This is my work area. Wow, hi, uh, three people already. I'm, I'm just about to get going with the ink. Uh, hello, Geek Workshop. Hello, Charles. Hello, Joe Hardy. And hello, Eric Rivera. This is, uh, yes, I'm very excited. Today's prompt was underwater, and I was like, I want to draw the creature from the Black Lagoon. So I just worked up a uh, sketch, and then I lightboxed the sketch so that I had some clean lines to work on. And, uh, yeah, I'm gonna, gonna do my best at, uh, I've never tried to draw the creature before, the creature from the Black Lagoon, but, uh, I love his design. So, I'm gonna do that. And I'm gonna start with throwing in a lot of bubbles in the foreground, because I don't want to forget. How's everybody doing? Thank you very much for joining me. Very nice of you. Much appreciated. Feel free to ask questions, but understand that for a moment I'm going to be a little distracted doing some of the, um, the basic setup here. Let's see, hold on, I got a pop-up window, okay. Ocean Man, take me by the hand, lead me to your van. Well, that got creepy. Hello, Software Agents Corp. Hello, the Ghost Dog. Nice to have all of you here. Wow, I'm starting to see some uh, familiar names. I'm pretty bad at names, so it's like taken me a while to probably like recognize, but uh, I feel like almost everybody here has been uh, in the stream before. I, wow, that's flattering, guys. Thanks. And McNuggy says they just woke up. So, good morning. I think I've mentioned before that one thing I want to be able to um, get better at is not just thinking, but really trying to add some some motion to my artwork, you know, like really loosen up and, and not have my artwork be so stiff. I feel like I uh, my process is such that I think it leads to a very uh, stiff result um, because I'll, I'll sort of sketch something and then I'll light box it to get like a little bit tighter pencils and then I'll start inking it and uh, and somewhere along the way I'm, I'm really losing a lot of uh, 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 mo motion, momentum, uh, energy. It just becomes very sort of posed and uh, hopefully I can learn to uh, overcome the, those those instincts if I just draw a little bit more, try to draw a little faster There's definitely something to be said for um, incorporating your mistakes into your work. So we'll see. Jake Turlecki says, classic character. I love it. Well, thank you. I love it, too. You know, as a kid, I didn't really know about the Universal Movie Monsters too well. I discovered them maybe at the end of being a teenager. And I, and I was like, holy, these are, these are really good, either because they got a great actor for the role, or they just had special effects that were ahead of the time. But um, for a variety of reasons, they're kind of all good, which is amazing. The quality level for the Universal 
movie monsters from the you know the 1920s I'll say like through uh, I don't know maybe the maybe maybe as late as the 50s they were really producing some great stuff anyway just my two cents on the matter I discovered the original Frankenstein movie when I was five you know what uh, Geek Workshop I um I might have I may have seen Frankenstein when I was younger. I don't think I saw it as young as five, but I may have seen that one a little younger than the others. Kind of of them all, like Frankenstein or Dracula. One one of those two is the classic. Uh, Jake asks if I've ever used nibs. You know, um, I I have. I don't think I'm very good with them. Uh, so maybe I should practice with them more. Uh, I definitely used them a lot when I was in um, high school. I was just sort of starting to take my artwork a little bit more seriously at that point in time, and I experimented with them a bit, but um, not enough to, to really be confident with the results. Uh, so pens and brush pens are, are my tools of choice. Um, I have a lot of respect for artists who um, can work with nibs and with brushes. Do you recommend any good Spider-Man titles? Asks Anja. Um, yeah. There have been lots of good runs and bad runs of Spider-Man. I think overall he's probably my favorite superhero. Personally, I like D Dan Slott's run from Brand New Day forward. I've learned that there are plenty of people that dislike it as much as I like it, but I like it. So I recommend him. I definitely recommend Stan Lee, Steve Ditko, Stan Lee, and uh, John Romita. All those 60s through 70s uh, versions of Spider-Man, I, I loved I loved all of that. That all stands up. I discovered Spider-Man more in the uh, 80s, and uh, one of my personal favorite stories is Death of Craven. Um, and I'm forgetting who wrote that right now, but the artwork is by Mike Zeck, and I think it's some of his absolute best. Um, so anyway, that, that gets a strong recommendation from me, uh, for whatever that's worth. It's it's not your typical Spider-Man story. It's much darker than I think Spider-Man had almost ever been before. But um, it's really cool. The artwork is incredible. What do you think of the Ultimate Spider-Man comic book series? Um, yeah, Craven's Last Hunt, Gears of Gorgeous. Uh, what do I think of this? I, I like Ultimate Spider-Man. I don't think it's uh, flawless, but overall, um, I, I enjoy it overall. Um, you know, I think that, uh, well, I've done a Bendis episode of Comic Tropes before. I think he has his tropes. He falls into using the word crazy a lot. You know, he falls into certain speech patterns that at first when you read them seem kind of authentic and real and engaging and then over time it starts to sort of be something you notice and uh, become a, a little bit of a, a hindrance to your enjoying the story I think. So I experienced some of that with Ultimate Spider-Man but um, it's okay. I actually quite like the Miles Morales character. I just He's just such a likable, good kid. I don't know. There, there's a lot that I like about him. His powers are slightly different, and I like his family. I like like the story uh, elements that that provides, especially his uncle. Anyway, yeah, I uh, I overall it, it it might be my favorite work of Bendis at Marvel is Ultimate Spider-Man. Geek Workshop says Craven's Last Hunt was originally going to be a DC comic book. I think a Batman one. That is the first I've ever heard of that. Um, if that's true, 
I could sort of see it because it does sort of feel like something like of that time that like the KG Beast wants to be a better Batman or something like that. I, I could definitely see that story having been developed for Batman, but I've never heard that before. That's news to me if that's if that's the case. Um, Joe Hardy recommends the Spider-Man story where uh, Peter kills MJ with his radioactive... Um, how do I say this and still monetize this video? His reproductive creation. <laughs> That's true. That was in the book Rain. Supposedly he'd been poisoning Mary Jane because he's radioactive. Depressing, right? I think it's depressing. But that happened. Marvel thought that that would be a story everybody wanted to see. Have you read any good Indian comics or writer artist? Oh. I assume when you say Indian, you are talking literally from India. Um. Wow, I'm not sure that I have. And the only reason I'm semi-surprised is now that I think of it, I have some Indian friends that are pretty nerdy, so I would have thought maybe they might have introduced me to something like that. Actually, now, my, my brother-in-law is from India, so I guess we've just never talked about comic books from India before, so I don't have any recommendations there. Uh, huh. That's so weird how you can, like, feel like you've been exposed to so many different things and then all of a sudden realize that there's still a huge gap in your knowledge. Like, I feel like I know a decent amount about comic books, even from other countries, at least the the sort of well-reviewed top-tier things. <laughs> and now I'm thinking about it, and I have no idea what comics in India are any good. I, I can't think of any. Would Saliva do the same thing, though? Asks McNuggie. I don't know. Maybe. What do I think is the biggest Marvel fail? Asks Geek Workshop. Biggest fail? I would have to say that, like, if we're going to say the biggest fail, then it can't just be me saying, oh, I personally disliked this story. Because that, that's not necessarily a fail. That, that, that might mean that I personally just didn't relate to the material. So the biggest fail would be something that, that cost them big business, right? Or got them like, so I don't know. I think that, oh, the biggest fail was going into bankruptcy in the 90s. They, they produced way too many crappy comic books with chromium covers and subpar artists, and they put way too much out there, and then they had to, uh, you know, maintain financial solvency by selling off all their movie rights it's just so that they had a cash influx and could stay afloat so yeah like the the 90s marvel just just putting out too many titles that's their biggest fail hollow nano asks what my favorite universal movie monster is that's a good question Probably Dracula, Bella Lugosi, probably. Frankenstein is the other one that I keep thinking of. Boris Karloff made quite an impression on me, and uh, it's one of those two. But if you're asking, like, my overall favorite, like, sort of uh, movie monster series outside of just Universal, I'm a big fan of the, uh, the horror movies created in uh, England in the uh, 70s by by Hammer. Uh, so like all of their uh, Dracula movies with Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing, those are pretty badass. Those are some of my absolute favorites. Hopefully uh, a bunch of you know what I'm talking about. Just so good. 
so much gorier. I mean, it's much more exploitative, but what keeps it good is the fact that you've got these amazing actors like Christopher Lee, and Peter Cushing, and a few others. It just raises the bar on like what's what's some pretty exploitative, uh, gory stuff. God, I love that stuff. Software Agents Corp. says, uh, YouTube has gone crazy with this automatic ad apocalypse. A video I made about Resident Evil 3 years ago was flagged for violent content. It's very tame. I had to go back and slightly re-edit it. I, my latest video uh, is for Sergeant Spook, which is a pretty innocent, pretty tame comic book from the 1940s. And it's not like I swear or anything... YouTube has demonetized that. That video is like maybe among my most innocent videos, but they've demonetized it. It's a good thing I'm not trying to make a living off of this stuff where I would just be furious. Um, because they don't even tell you why or where. Like, they're like, you know, they, they could tell you, oh, you know, at minute 1035. There's objectionable content. Okay, well, let me go and see if it's something I'm willing to edit out so that I can get some ad revenue on it. They don't even tell you that, so it's just frustrating. If you don't make YouTube videos, don't. It's an exercise in frustration. How involved are you at Image Comics? They're my fave publisher. I didn't... I, that's from uh, Sigamigs. I would not say that I'm involved at you at Image at all, at all. Uh, rather, what I'm involved with to any degree is I've known Robert Kirkman for a long time since he was self-publishing. In fact, since the beginning of when he was self-publishing, and he just has always sent me the stuff that he publishes to proofread. That's it. And I'm not even the only proofreader. So I'm not an editor, not an artist, not anything. I have no official capacity at Image Comics. So I'm not involved at all, really. But I like Image. Um, I like their model. I like their business model. And I love a lot of what they've put out over the years. Not everything. But they've put a lot of unique content out and given voice to some really fantastic creators. Um, it's amazing to have grown up without that model in place. Uh, it was so much harder for creators to uh, maintain their their rights and ownership over their creations. There were options. Image was the first that like hit it big in terms of allowing creators to retain their rights and still providing an outlet for some new people, which has really grown in the last couple decades. But anyway, yeah, I like Image. Uh, what is the weirdest concept for a superhero? asks the ghost dog. The weirdest one I think I've come across is a guy whose grandfather was in the Revolutionary War. He's long since dead, but whenever he's in trouble, he blows a horn and it calls on the ghost of his grandfather. The guy in and of himself isn't like a superhero, but he sort of faces off with supervillains and evil people, and uh, he just calls on his grandfather's ghost whenever he's in trouble. That's pretty out there. He's not much of a hero.
Do you still post on Pencil Jack? asks Jake Turlecki. Mm, I can't even remember the last time I did. Um, it's nothing against Pencil Jack per se. I just, you know, message boards are kind of a thing of the past. Ever since the advent of uh, social media, we, uh, we can form groups and get reactions so much faster. Um, every once in a great while, I will check on it. But it's really from nostalgia. I, I don't I don't know anybody that's still posting there, I don't think. Maybe Terry himself does, the guy that created it. By the way, the guy that created Pencil Jack uh, used to be a comic book artist. He uh, illustrated some of Robert Kirkman's comics. Um, I, I personally very much recommend uh, St. Michael. It's a spin-off from Battle Pope. It's really good. Terry drew that. It's been a while now, I guess. You know, I'm looking at this sketch that I'm doing of, like, the woman sort of, like, grasping upwards. And, of course, I was thinking of, like, sort of being dragged down into the water, but I, I, I glance at it now and um, I sort of, I think I might have been subconsciously uh, inspired by the poster for Evil Dead where a woman's just sort of reaching up in desperation. It's not the same pose, but it might have been in my head when I was drawing this. Anja says, have you heard of Kirby Crackle Band? They've created some good songs around comic book character. I agree. Kirby Crackle is fantastic. Yeah, I've, I've seen them perform before. They're, they're great. Good band. Good gimmick. Yeah, I like them very much. All right, you know what? I um, I gotta start on the uh, the creature, right? What am I doing? I'm I'm spending all this time on bubbles and this girl. It's like you can go down like a hole when you're drawing and lose track of like the sort of big picture. Sometimes if you if you focus on too many details, um. So let me see what I can do here. Um, I know what I want to do for the most part, but I'm going to try to find my way to the to the true details as I proceed, because that's what I'm most interested in doing on this uh, on the creature. He's got some amazing detail. Uh, software agent says, I think Image has done a good job repairing their image. <laughs> Have you seen the legend of the seven golden vampires, vampires in Kung Fu? Absolutely. That was, um, I, what was that? Was that Hammer Studios and uh, Golden Harvest working together? I, it was something like that. It was, um, it's a British company and, uh, a Hong Kong film production company that worked together produced some something pretty out there. Absolutely, I've seen that. Just establishing a uh, thick outline for the creature so that he hopefully will stand out a bit, and then I will uh, break out some of my little technical pens for. Uh, actually adding the detail and hopefully that that provides a little bit of a contrast 
It makes him pop a little bit more. I think the thing I'm most looking forward to drawing is literally his hand. He has an awesome hand. Are you a fan of Steve Ditko's Mr. A? Um, I haven't read it. I, I'm aware of it, but I haven't actually read it. Is it good? Doesn't he st technically still work on that? It's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, how do you even come up with that as a superhero premise? Oh, okay, going back. I, I'm, I'm way behind on these uh, questions. I'm, sorry, folks. Have you ever read anything by CrossGen Comics? They had some great titles. Uh, that's from True Fan Forum. You know what? Complete blind spot for me. Totally aware of them when they came out. Just never, uh, never really gave them a shot. And then they didn't really last long enough for me to uh, get around to... Uh, to trying. I thought their model was really interesting how they, you know, just had their artists obligated to sort of work normal business hours and come into a, an office together. I think that that creates a, a level of professionalism and accountability. So I, I really thought that that was an interesting idea to try. I didn't necessarily think it would work because artists all have different processes, don't they? So, would it actually work? Well, wasn't really that wasn't really ultimately the problem. I don't think it was their uh, business model. They they just they they weren't really making what they needed to. So that's sort of a blind spot for me. Don't know. Anything about cross-gen characters. So I may research it someday, and uh, if I learn something interesting, I will uh, make a video. All right, I guess that'll do it for the outline. Let's see. Uh, what is so bad about Stan Lee? Did he steal credits or something? Because I've always seen him speak highly of his artists, says Anja. Well, it's it's not a super easy thing. I'm going to turn on my light. It'll wash me out a little. Hopefully you can see the artwork better. The argument is that Stan Lee... Uh, promoted himself and Marvel well ahead of what he used his energy for, like promoting uh, his artists. He gives them a lot of credit now. Did he give them a lot of credit then, it, when they when they really could have used that help and and you know made more money? Um, that's the argument. And and then, if you really want to like criticize him, a lot of people will argue as to exactly how much he contributed to the writing. There's no question that Stan Lee is a writer. There's no question that he has a style. But he also sort of developed the Marvel style of making comics, which entailed giving something as simple as just a paragraph or two to his artists and saying that's the that's the next issue draw draw something about that but then th that means that the artist had to figure out what actually goes on 20 some pages of story so if stan lee was really giving you know jack kirby and steve ditko that little guidance don't they deserve even more credit for having created these characters. That's the argument. And uh, it'll probably always be an argument because we don't have those those scripts, you know, we don't have we don't have that evidence. These are just stories that are told by people. So it's hard to say. 
Who's going to watch The Shape of Water? I don't know what that means. Sorry. What do you think of the new Hellboy reboot coming out? Asks Hollow Nano. Um, I'm hopeful. Hopeful. Looks like it could be good. Looks like it could be pretty cool. I like the... Uh, I like the actors that they're casting, and I like the look of David Harbour as Hellboy. And, uh, yeah, I trust Mike Mignola, you know? He, it's his creation. He's involved. And uh, if this is the way he wants to go with it, more power to him. Let's, let's hope for the best. Nobody cares about Hellboy more than Mike, so could could be good. We will hope. Do you work on Plastic Farm? I met a group in Virginia during a convention years ago, and somehow your name popped up. Um, yeah, actually, now that you mention it, I guess I'd forgotten, but I, I did do, I did illustrate a story for Plastic Farm. Uh, Plastic Farm is uh, an independently self-published comic by a writer named Rafer Roberts. That's his real name. And currently, he is um, writing a lot of stuff at uh, Valiant. I think he writes, um, oh, what is it? Harbinger. Harbinger? He writes, he writes that story. And he wrote a lot of stuff recently for uh, Archer and Armstrong. But he also self-publishes his own stuff. And so before he ever broke into the industry, he was just a local guy that I'd hang out with and... Uh, I, I did a guest spot like illustrating one of his stories, so yes. I did once do a story there. Small world. Uh, I'd be curious what convention it was that you went to. Uh, was it the Small Press Expo? That is one of my all-time favorite comic conventions. I think that that one's amazing. Amazing. What do you think of Netflix Punisher getting pulled from Comic-Con due to the Las Vegas shooting? Hmm. Oh, didn't know that it was getting pulled from the uh, Comic-Con, but uh, I'm fine with it. I mean, I'm going to Comic-Con. I, I can understand that sensitivity. Uh, let's face it, like, Going to a big crowd like that right after a mass shooting is, um, it can be a nerve wracking experience because you don't know who you can trust, and lots of people are in costumes. And uh, so, if they want to just pull the show about the guy who does nothing but shoot people from the Comic Con for like, you know, yeah, that's fine. That, that makes sense. I'll wait for it to show up on Netflix. And when I when I go to Comic Cons, I don't care too much about those panels that like show you trailers or you know sneak peeks of an upcoming episode. I just I'm like you know you read about all that news from like all the entertainment sites, the comic book news sites, within like an hour of of the panel happening, and then. Uh, you know, the trailers mostly end up online within a day or two. So, uh, you know, if there's no line, it can be fun to go to a panel because you get to see your favorite actor, or your favorite creator, etc. But those lines, oh, no thanks. I'm past that. I just have zero interest in waiting in lines anymore. So uh, that's just something that I do not get into when I go to the Comic-Cons. That's news to me that they pulled that. I hadn't heard. Working on commissions with bare-bones descriptions is a nightmare, especially design commissions. Yeah, I, I agree. It's, it's next to impossible. Like, how are you supposed to deliver what somebody wants if they can't even describe it? I mean, it drives me nuts. I get requests for, like, oh, can you draw my idea? What's, I don't know, what's your idea? 
Oh, you know, it's a little bit like this, maybe, maybe a little like that. Like, be specific. Be specific. I have no idea what you're trying to describe. It's in your head. No, it's not in mine. Who would win in a fight, Luke Cage or Luke Skywalker? Probably Luke Skywalker, but why would they be fighting? I think that they'd get along. But Luke Skywalker could always, like, I don't know, make Luke choke or something, right? He still needs to breathe. And, I'm, and I really wonder... Would a lightsaber cut through his bulletproof skin? I wonder. I think it's possible. Luke's skin isn't completely unbreakable. It's just super, super tough. But he's, uh... If he has to have, like, surgeries or something, they can do stuff to, to weaken it with acids and lasers and stuff like that. So I think a lightsaber maybe could cut into Luke Cage's skin. This is an important question that we should all be thinking about. I know I've just gone quiet. Sorry, guys. It'll, it'll happen from time to time that I just get lost in the drawing. Take a look up in just a sec. All right, what else? Uh, the Shape of Water is the new Guillermo del Toro movie. It's a sci-fi drama about a fish monster and a human woman. Oh, uh, well, I like most of Guillermo del Toro's stuff. I don't always love it, but I usually at least like it, and some of it's quite good. So, yeah, cool. I'll probably watch it. was not aware. I have been quite busy lately. Uh, I need a break soon. I meant to take a break from comic tropes for just like a week, take a week off um, recently. And at the last minute, I just couldn't do it. And I did that Spider-Man One More Day review, which actually required me to refresh myself and, like, you know, get up to speed with some research. And, but I, I need to take a break for at least a week so at some point. I'm, uh, I'm just really busy at work. I'm busy at with comic tropes. And then, of course, I do, like, live streaming for a day <laughs> throughout October. And I'm also curating... Uh, horror movie reviews at therobotspajamas.com because that's something I've created over the last four years. I just run a horror movie review every every business day of the week through October. It's too much. I need a break. <laughs> Hopefully this trip to New York tomorrow will will sort of feel like a vacation we'll say I hope I hope but then I've got all these friends that I want to catch up with and the comic con and I want to record something for comic tropes at the comic con so will it really be a vacation no I don't let myself take vacations because I just keep working and there's no point. It's not like I get paid for any of this. I get paid to do my job. That's it.
dumb. Oh well, that's just who I've always been. I, I, I don't know if I'm a workaholic, but I'm close to it. If you don't have local comic book stores nearby, where are the best places to buy and find comics online, asks Plum Dog. It can be hard to pick without a preview. Well, personally, I like reading digital comics these days. I just don't want to deal with a big collection anymore. I'm past that. I, so I read a lot of my comics digitally, and you can usually get a few preview pages and see reviews and stuff. So I'm a big fan of digital comics. But where else? What, what stores? Whew. I'm trying to think of... Uh, if I know of any stores or, or models for for shopping for comics online that are good. When I was growing up in Massachusetts, um, there was a chain there, and there still is, called New England Comics, NEC. They're the ones that publish uh, The Tick, among other things. And they always had um, online comics ordering and delivery throughout the time I was in college for for quite a while I would um I would buy from them but I mean that that's the same as basically choosing any sort of store that's semi local and uh going from there but if anybody in the chat room has uh, a recommendation for shopping online be sure to speak up Jake Terlecki says that I should do a Comic Tropes episode on Bill Sienkiewicz. Um, yeah, I would love to. I'm a big fan of Bill Sienkiewicz. Uh, it's not quite the same, but I did discuss his work in um, uh, my Legion review, uh, because I discuss uh, the New Mutants comic that he first appeared in, and uh, that was illustrated by Bill Sienkiewicz. So, uh, not exactly the same thing, but uh, I do discuss him somewhat in that episode. So until I find some time to set aside and talk about his artwork and style and his contributions, uh, hopefully that's that's at least a little something. Yeah, he's he's quite talented. I uh, I like that guy. McNuggie says, you deserve way more subs for the quality of videos you produce. Well, that's super kind of you to say. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not, because I've been doing this for over a year. Every single week, usually more often than once a week, and... Uh, the growth is very, very slow, so I don't know. Might not be delivering what everybody wants. Obviously, some people do, and I appreciate that. I, All I really know is if you're going to create anything, you have to at least entertain yourself because you never know if somebody else will like what you're creating, right? You never really know. So you have to at least enjoy that process yourself to some degree. You don't want to do something in a total vacuum where nobody's listening either. But your first audience should always be yourself. If you're trying to develop a comic book story, don't try to tr chase a trend. Trends disappear in the blink of an eye. So do something that you at least would enjoy reading. If you're sure that you would enjoy it, there's a great chance that there are other people like you out there that would also enjoy it. That's my philosophy. 
I noticed Maddie and Vincent don't podcast too much anymore, Robots Pajamas. It's a shame. It was a good listen. That's from Jake Terlecki. Jake, those are obviously two two good buddies of mine. I tell them all the time I miss them podcasting. They say that they're too busy. It's just not going to happen. I wish... I think those guys are funny. I don't even know if any of that stuff's up anymore, is it? There might be a, a, some of it on YouTube. There might be some of it. I think I think I sat in on at least two episodes, and, and we uploaded those to YouTube just as an experiment to see if it caught on on YouTube more than it did, like, as a podcast. I don't, I don't think it, it really did, if I'm remembering right. It's been a while. It's been quite a while. Been a while. I'm hungry. I need food. What did you guys have to eat today? Maybe I'll have that. Just tell me stuff like steak and pizza and I'll, okay I'll go get some some steak some listeners some viewers got got it and it sounded really good so that's what I'm gonna have What else? Hey, Jesus Mosqueda. I came to compliment you on your drawing. Oh, thank you. That's that's really nice. And Plum Dog says yesterday Cobra came out pretty sweet. Um, I actually touched that up slightly after the stream went off. Give me. I was worried that her arm wasn't represented well so I filled all this black in to help like because with the foreshortening I felt like her head was starting to look extra small and I still think that this is an okay proportion but it was looking really small when this was covered up like that just looked too big and this helped for me so I touched that up a little just because it was bothering me I just couldn't let, let it go But uh, that was about all I really could afford to spend the time on uh, on addressing for that. Because the goal here is to just keep moving, right? Maybe that isn't exactly the goal. The goal is to get better. The goal is to get better. Is anybody else out there doing Inktober? Or if you're not an artist, maybe you're a writer or a musician, are you doing anything like that? Has anybody out there ever done 24-hour comic book day or NaNoWriMo to write something within a month? They're all good challenges. Anything that forces you to keep working. Who should the next Lego, who should be the next Lego movie? Asks Mark Bariner. I don't know. Who should be the next Lego movie? Do you mean like what sort of set or something like that? Now that I, if that's what you mean... I definitely wouldn't mind a uh, a Lego Star Wars movie. That could be pretty funny. I'll tell you, when the, the Lego movie sequel was originally supposed to be directed by... Oh, um, uh, hold on. I'm forgetting his name. Let me think for a second. Mm, by Rob Schraub, comic book creator. 
I was so excited for that. I thought that Rob Schraub would be a fantastic director for the Lego Movie sequel. And then something changed after uh, several months, and, and it was announced that uh, they were going a different way. They were going with somebody else as the director, and I was like really disappointed. I, I, I don't know what happened there, but... Um, yeah, Rob Schraub. I'm a big fan of him as far as comic books go. I don't know how many of you out there have read his comic, uh, Scud the Disposable Assassin. That is a great comic book. It's really funny. It's got like a, some real heart to it. It's about a robot that's disposable. As soon as he completes his assassination, he'll self-destruct. That's the point of them in this future world. And he, uh, he learns this, so he completes his mission by making sure that his target is brain dead and then he puts him on life support so that he doesn't uh, die and then he has to take jobs as a hitman in order to um, to pay for the guy's life support I love that I love that Rob Schraub great artist great director really funny guy I think he's fantastic Ah, let's see. Steaks are high, but today mushroom soup with dumplings, says Gerzigors. And I know that I'm probably not saying your name right, man. I'm trying. I'm trying. Uh, yeah. Soup with dumplings sounds pretty good, actually. You know, that's not necessarily super common here in the U.S., but um, I do like some good dumplings. There's a place... Uh, in Seattle called Pelmeni the Dumpling Palace or the Dumpling Czar, something like that. It's, it's good. It's got some good dumplings. I recommend it. Eric Rivera says, yep, I'm doing it. I guess that probably means you are doing Inktober. So kudos to you, man. This is this is work. This is this is work. But um I'm even though it's work, I'm having fun with it. I am. I'm not like totally happy with what I'm creating, but I, I see some personal progress here and there. So that's pretty good. Hopefully you are too, man. All we can do is try. Ooh, I like how fine this brush is. I'm going to have tons of little bubbles all, all over the place because of this. Yeah. Like that. I can never get motivation to do any art challenges. Well, McNuggy, I usually don't want to draw either. It's work, but then you have a final result, and you kind of like it for at least a little while, so it's worth it. You know what, like, the only way I can get myself to do, like, any sort of personal project type work is I stop thinking about it, and I just say, okay, this is the time I'm going to do it, and I just start, I just make that schedule ahead of time. Like future Chris dictates that this is when something will get done, and then eventually present day Chris has to uh, fulfill that. Uh, so, that's me.
But I'm pretty good at procrastination on personal projects, so who knows. The only time I don't I, I, I fulfill things is when somebody else is involved, because I cannot stand to let other people down. So even though like creating my comic tropes videos is a personal project, I know that there's at least some viewers every week. And that if I just didn't do it for no reason, some people would notice. And I and I I just can't bear to let somebody down like that. So that's what motivates me. I just can't. I hold myself accountable to people that I don't really even know. But that's what I do. Jesus Mosqueda says, I want to be an artist, but right now I'll just keep on working to become better. Well, that's all I'm trying to do. That's all I'm trying to do. I just want to be better. Um, I wish that there was something easy, but you know what? Like, even if you were a great artist, you'd probably still be frustrated that you're not as great as you want to be, so... You're never going to really be happy with it. You just have to sort of get to a point where you enjoy the process and other people seem to like the result. And then you have to be like, okay, time to let this one go and move on to the next drawing because somebody liked it. Or maybe I'm just talking out my butt. I'll come back to that. Oh my gosh, the kids in that playground across the street from me are absolutely just screaming with the games they're playing. Makes it very hard to concentrate from time to time. Serious political question that could destroy your reputation. In favor or against pineapple in pizza? That's from Carlos Quiroga. Oh boy. Here we go. You had to ask the question that's going to cost me half my listenership, my viewership, one way or the other. No matter how I answer, I'm going to lose. And if I don't answer at all, certain percentage of people will just say, oh, he's dodging the question. The question being, should pineapple be on pizza? Here's my answer. See ya! <laughs> um, <laughs> should pineapple be on pizza? You know what? Um, it, I never go out of my way to order that, but if somebody else has ordered it, I will eat, I will usually eat that. I, I don't mind pineapple on pizza, but I I think it only works with some things. Like if it's the only ingredient, okay. If it's an ingredient with other meats, great. If it's an ingredient with other veggies, don't care for it personally. Does not mix well for me. That that I don't know. I don't know if that's how most people feel or if that's just me. Um so I won't go out of my way to order it. I will eat it, but only in certain combinations. And that is my stand on that issue. And if the people want to elect someone else to do comic tropes and live streaming, well, then that's on them. That's their decision. That's their right as citizens in the world. At least I didn't duck the question. I will eat pineapple on pizza. Ham pineapple with fine sliced onion and a mozzarella is actually pretty good if you give it a chance. That's from Plum Dog. Okay, Jesus uh, Mosqueda says he's got to go. Bye. Thank you for stopping by. Appreciate it.
appreciate it very much. It's uh, a lot more fun to do this when you've sort of got people to, to chat with, you know? Um, wow, I love it. I really do. I, I might do some more live streaming after uh, Inktober ends. If, uh, if I can get an audience, I mean, like, I know you guys might get burned out after a while, but... You know, if people want to swing by, I mean, it's 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 good for me as an artist because it's making me draw more. So, you know, I appreciate that. You guys are helping me with my motivation. All right, what else do I have for pens here? I don't want that. Mm, clean this up a little. Any chance for Freak Brothers tropes? That's from Mark Barimer. I have no idea who the Freak Brothers are. I'm sorry. I don't know. I'm I'm ignorant on something. Uh, somebody out there explain to me what the Freak Brothers is, because I don't know. Freak Brothers. Is that like the name of a comic or is that the name of a creator? Where is, is this? Oh, I've never used this brush before. I like it. It's my Pigma, but in a medium. It's always nice when you're sort of working with brushes that are dying a little bit and all of a sudden you find a brand new one. Opinion on Minecraft, asks Joe Hardy. Um, yeah, I love Minecraft. I, I haven't played it in a while. I definitely went through a period of being way into Minecraft. Wouldn't say that I was necessarily good at it. I never invented anything all that clever. Just, you know, some elaborate buildings and stuff. But uh, my friend Jaycon is uh, fantastic at Minecraft and... He would like escort me through the worlds that he created and get a little jealous. It's nice. Talented dude. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. Mm. Oops, I just hummed a few bars of a. Uh, Super Mario, I wonder if that'll be enough to get this demonetized. There are kids out there just shouting about nothing. They're just playing. Pineapple on pizza is okay if it's complemented with the right meat or vegetables, says Software Agents Corp. Well, Mr. Brave, what's the right vegetable or meat. What is the right vegetable or meat? What is the right vegetable or meat? What is right vegetable or meat? That's me doing Neil Hamburger. Why? Why did they say this? Because they had to. Anybody else out there know or enjoy Neil Hamburger? I like lots of types of comedy, and I like anti-comedy. When something's intentionally trying to sort of not be funny, that really cracks me up. Why did Paris Hilton 
showed herself. I don't have an actual punchline. I'm just talking like him. Do, do, do. Ha somebody new here, CSNG says, have you read or watched My Hero Academia? If so, what are your thoughts? I'm sorry to disappoint you. I have not read whatever that is. My Hero Academia. It sounds slightly familiar, but I, I can't place it. Is it... um? Is it anime? My Hero Academia. I can't place it. I definitely have not seen it, so I don't have an educated opinion on it. You'll have to tell me if it's good, if it's something I should have been watching this whole time. Is it about how you should stay in school because school is cool? If so, I agree. If you stay in school, you're going to get an education. And if you get an education, nothing can stop you. Nothing. But if you get rich, you can stop all those, all those smarty pantses. So just get rich. Screw everybody else. Only watch out for yourself. That's what I always say. It is a manga anime. Okay. Thanks for your knowledge on the eternal debate. By the way, your Venom Gwen was amazing. Well, I don't know about that, Carlos. I, I forgot to draw the spider on her back. I, I, I missed a big part of, of the design. I, I just forgot. But that's very kind of you. Uh, I, I did have fun trying to draw it for the first time. And I had fun trying to draw like all the sort of leather. That was that was a blast. What do you think Mario would have done for a living if he hadn't been a plumber? Do you think he still would have worked in like waste management or something? Was that what he was really into? I don't know. These are the things I think about late at night. This brush is fantastic. I'm, it's so smooth and like full that I'm like tempted to do all sorts of parts that I shouldn't be using this brush on because it's a medium size so I can't do like really fine detail but it feels like I've got control so I keep getting sort of tempted to yeah see I was about to start doing some fine detail there and I really shouldn't with this particular brush. <laughs> There's some funny stuff there. Joe Hardy asked McNuggie if he was excited about the Szechuan sauce on Friday, and McNuggie goes, I'm 23. I don't remember ever having it before. Oh, man. That's like, I feel like it wasn't that long ago that Szechuan sauce was promoting Mulan. That's so funny to, like... It just makes me feel old sometimes. <laughs> All 
I don't know. Why would I know what it tastes like? 23. You old piece of crap. Hey. Hey. How dare you? How dare you? Mario would have been a detective solving toon crimes. Oh, maybe he would have been. What's your favorite drawing of yours? Ugh. Don't ask me, Geek Workshop. I, I, what I'll do is I'll enjoy this drawing that I'm working on right now for about 24 hours. And then I will not like it anymore because I will only see the areas that I think I could have done better. Not just all the mistakes, but the areas that I personally could, should have been able to do better. So uh, my favorite drawing is whatever one I've created most recently. I'll like that for about a day before I'm sick of it. And then, uh, and then it's just, I can't look at my art anymore. I don't. I do not enjoy at all looking at my own art. Like any of the comic stuff that I've talked about that I've done. Oh, I just can't. <laughs> well, okay, hold on. It's not great, but I don't do much painting, and I did a painting of David Bowie, like right after he died. I, I really liked David Bowie. And when he passed away last year, I don't know, it just made me feel emotional and I wanted to do something or other to sort of address those feelings. I wanted to sort of like latch on to them in a, in a way. So I decided to do a painting of David Bowie um, that was sort of like a shattered mirror or something showing him from like all sorts of different eras with his different looks and um, I kinda liked I kinda like that I kinda like my painting it, it's not it's not great but since I don't do much painting I don't I don't criticize it the same way I criticize my illustrations one of my cats is walking around down here if he comes back I'll show him to you guys Milo Want to be famous? Uh, Angelica Smith says, Are you watching any interesting TV shows? What are your favorite shows in general? Um, yeah, I'm watching a few things right now. Let's see. Um, what's on right now? A bunch of stuff has just ended and some other stuff has just begun. I'm a big fan of Rick and Morty. Big fan of Rick and Morty. Uh, when it's on... I usually like uh, Game of Thrones. I read all those books, so so I really enjoyed the early seasons adapting uh, that kind of stuff. Um, what else is good? I'll watch Walking Dead. I'm, I'm I like most of that. Um, not as into it as I used to be, but it's 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 entertaining. Uh, my fiance likes it. Uh, my sister likes it, so it gives me something to talk about with them. Um, what do I really like, though? Let me, I mean, I guess I'm also watching stuff on HBO, like I'm watching Vice Principles, I'm watching Curb Your Enthusiasm. Milo. Hold on, my cat's trying to eat some paper to get my attention. Milo. It's getting close to his dinner time. Oh, you know what? He knew that it was dinner time. It's a little past seven. I guess this one is taking a little longer than I realized, folks. Um, some of my all-time favorite shows. I love Arrested Development. Um, what else do I like? I like Doctor Who usually. Uh, I watch a lot of superhero type shows. I, I'll watch The Flash and Arrow. It's okay. If I miss it, I don't mind catching up down the road. I, I'm not in a rush to see it. Yeah, I feel like I'm forgetting some shows that I really like. I'm just uh, not thinking of it right now. Interesting question.
my cat Milo is being a little naughty. Hey Milo. Hey. I don't know what piece of paper he has found in this room, but he's he's eating something up. It's probably a piece of my artwork or something. Because it's it's his dinner time. He wants to eat. But I want to finish some of this. Um, I will have to leave pretty soon. I can't do this for too much more. I've got other stuff. I have to record uh, comic tropes tonight because I leave for New York tomorrow. So this is my only day of the week that I can do it. People get mad if I didn't do that, probably. Well, I was doing this other thing that took an hour. I was drawing. I was making comics. Now, we don't want to see you make your bad comics. We want to hear you talk about weird comics, good comics. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. Software agent says that he's taken off, but uh, blah, blah, blah. I will not be able to catch another one of these until next Monday. Well, that's okay, man. I um, For the next several days, until tu Tuesday is the next time I'll be doing these live streams this way. In between that, I'm going to be in New York at the Comic-Con seeing friends and stuff. I'm going to try to do brief live streams over the next several days, just brief ones. I, I can only use my um, my iPhone, Wi-Fi. I'm gonna do a little stand and I'll do a little sketch, but I won't be able to draw for like as long or as detailed. I just I just won't have access to what I need to make that happen. But um, I'm gonna try to stick to drawing every day. So I don't know even like what time I'm gonna be able to do this, folks. Uh, but I will be back to a regular schedule as of uh, as of next Tuesday. In between, we'll see. I missed some of this conversation. Jake Turlecki is saying, "I did one of Labyrinth's character, Jareth." What do you mean you did one? Did you mean you drew one? Did you draw Jareth? Oh! Excuse me. Before I was talking about doing a painting of David Bowie that I liked. That I did. Okay. You were saying that you did a painting of him as Jareth. Now I get it. Sorry. I'm a little slow, aren't I? Um, that sounds awesome, man. Because we had the same idea about how to uh, approach that sort of sadness. Hmm. All right, I'm just going to finish up some of these uh, main details on the creature, and I'm going to have to call it a night. Uh, so I've got some other stuff to do. You guys have all been fantastic. Uh, I, I, I really have fun chatting. Um, I'm sorry that I can't uh, answer more. Obviously, I get lost in uh, the drawing uh, from time to time, and I... Uh, 
I lose track of time. I lose track of where the the thread is, but um, I really enjoy it. CSNG says, have fun at Comic-Con. Thank you very much. I'm sure I will. I always have fun there. It's a spectacle. It's overwhelming. But I get to see friends. You almost can't help but bump into celebrities just walking around the floor. It's uh, it's an experience. And I'm really close to the point where I'm going to allow myself to say that I'm done. I could keep drawing detail on the creature all night, giving him little bumps and, and fins and so on. I could draw this guy forever. This is a great design. Wow. Uh, see you, Joe Hardy. See you, Gersgors. Thank you, Mark. Will you video Comic-Con? Uh, Geek Workshop asks, not a live video. And last year I did the tropes of a Comic-Con, the things that you could always find in a Comic-Con. But I do have a special project in mind for a future Comic Tropes video. So it would involve video there, yes. Um, hopefully, hopefully my plan works. I want to keep it a surprise so long as I do the uh, do the ideas an episode. Um, if for some reason it doesn't come together, I'll talk about it on a future live stream. But I I, I feel good about it. I I think it's definitely achievable. I think it'll be funny. I think it'll be very very unique. Something nobody's ever seen or done before. So fingers crossed. realized I never really gave this lady any lips. I also never filled in her hair over here. Like the shadows are all, like this is the point of Inktober, isn't it? To get good at shadows and there's mistakes all over the place. Frustrating. <laughs> I keep meaning to quit. But it's really going to bug me if I don't correct a couple of these little errors. I, I know it's not going to be finished, but I like I had to fill in her hair here, and now I have to sort of finish uh, the creature's claw that's grabbing her here. I just have to. Ugh. Thanks for live streaming for us. No, thank you, McNuggy. Um, see you, Geek Workshop. Thank you, Gersigors. Uh, yep, I think I have to call it. I think I have to. I have to call it so that I can get some other stuff done tonight. Thank you all. I keep meaning to turn it off, and then I just I have to keep drawing a little bit. But I, I really am going to turn turn everything off in just a moment. Uh, Uh, 
All right. Underwater. That's the drawing for today. See y'all. Thank you very much for your support. Appreciate it.